Hey, good morning. It's a Friday morning, July 24th. Again, thanks for uh, being here this morning. I'm going to finish talking today about chapter 10 of my book, Everyday Talk, and Everyday Talk about sex. And we've had uh, four videos on it already, but it's just such an important factor in our culture. The one thing about sexuality is that the enemy wants us to believe a lie. The world around us is deceptive. Our flesh is deceptive. And the enemy, Satan, he's certainly deceptive. Promising something that sex will give that it never can. If only given in the context of what God ordained it to be. Proverbs chapter 7 gives us a running account of someone who was taken in by the lies and deception of sexual promise and delight. It's important to hang on to the first nine chapters of Proverbs. You have two women competing with each other. You have the voice of Lady Wisdom and the voice of Lady Folly. In chapter seven, while it talks about a specific woman, an immoral woman, an adulterous woman, it's largely referencing Proverbs, Lady Folly. This voice, this equally powerful feminine voice calling to us to, to, to follow something else other than what God said. So that's, that's the backdrop here. So the father takes the opportunity to warn his son about what's coming. And that's the message that I want to give this morning, this takeaway from this last talk about the sexuality and everyday talk. Although, like I said, I've written another book about it and there's tons to say. But notice what is the beginning of this chapter. Follow my advice, my son. Always treasure my commands. Obey them and live. Guard my teachings as your most precious possession. Tie them on the fingers, on your fingers as a reminder. Write them on deep in your heart. Love wisdom like a sister. Make insight a beloved member of your family. Let them hold you back from an affair with the immoral woman, that is from an affair with Dame Folly, from listening to the flattery of the adulterous woman, from Dame Folly's praise. It may come in the form of a particular person, but whether you're a man or a woman, that attraction and the call of Dame Folly is the same. What I'm going to say next is difficult for me to say, but I'm going to say it because it needs to be said. So much of the danger in sexual sin comes from within the church. The military has a phrase for it, they call it friendly fire, where you're taken out by your own side. And that's certainly what's happening, that there's so much rampant sexual misconduct in the Church of Christ. You cannot trust anyone who says, who does not represent and respect marriage, who does not, who is above board in all things. The Ephesian church, which had, <clears throat> was the recipients of one of the greatest letters and teachings from Paul that anyone could ever have. And Paul warned them about sexual sin. There must not even be a hint of this. And yet when we read about Ephesus, when Jesus is rebuking them, they have fallen into sexual sin. Purity is something that is a precious concept. I'm gonna talk about purity tonight. But for right now, honor men who honor God. Honor men who are shepherds and not dictators. Where there is forceful leadership, where there is dictatorial leadership, where there is authoritative leadership, other than the authority of the Word of God, sexual sin is not far behind. View women not as objects, not as something to do something for us, but as co-equal image bearers of God who have dignity and worth and purpose 
simply because they're women. If we objectify one woman, we objectify all women. If someone is looking at porn, he's defiling all women, not just the people that he is ravaging on the screen or page. Chapter 7 of Proverbs warns us to keep our hearts in the direction of God. Chapter 4 of Proverbs warns us, encourages us to embrace wisdom. Chapter 3 of Proverbs tells us that there's nothing you desire, nothing you and I can desire, that even compares with the wisdom of God. Well, this could not be more true than in this whole area of sexuality and sexual interaction. We have got to trust God. We have got to be obedient to him. That's how we can stand apart from this culture. Be aware of friendly fire, especially within the church. And it grieves me to say that. But too many leaders, too many pompous men are leading our churches and women into sexual sin and perversion. Get to sound that warning or I wouldn't be faithful to you. This whole context of loving God, that's what we're about, and that's what's positive. So I'm going to talk tonight about purity before we talk about music tomorrow. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you for your support. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button, turn on post notifications, and videos will come to you. Check out our website, everydaytalk247.com. Again, thanks so much for being here. Lord, give you a great day, and by his mercy and by his will, we'll see you tonight. Have a great day. Bye-bye.